Our first chef tonight is no stranger to the culinary world. Considered one of the top chefs in the country right now, he is the owner of Frontera Grill, Shoko, and Topola Bampo in Chicago. He also hosts the magnificent PBS cooking show Mexico, One Plate at a Time. He's written several award-winning cookbooks. Please join me in welcoming Rick Bayless. Rick, Thank you very thanks so much. much for being with us. We are thrilled to have you here. Thank you. It's a big pleasure fan to be of here. You, big fan of your shows, been to your restaurants in Chicago. We're just delighted to and have I you. And I love being in a studio kitchen with these beautifully set tables in front of me and this incredible it's, audience. It's we great. don't We've get this We've got a wonderful audience. Often. We've got 170 people here with us very tonight, and they're cool. all excited to see you. Very cool. And so tonight you're going to be making a little crab gazpacho for us? Well, you know, this is a kind of funny use of the word gazpacho, and it okay. kind of goes all the way back to the origins of that name. And it, it used to mean just something where you chopped a lot of stuff up together. And then it sort of evolved into this tomato thing, and of course it's got some chopped vegetables and right. so forth in it. But the original gazpacho was anything chopped up, and there's one place in Mexico that is famous for what they call gazpacho moreliano, and it's all made out of fruit. And the coolest thing is that you can vary the recipe for this any way you want with any kind of fruit that is in season at a time. So I'm going to show you the way that they do it in Morelia, Michoacan, where they have all this tropical fruit around them, and then everybody here can go home and figure out a way to make this when sounds, all the local fruit sounds comes Sounds fabulous. In. We've got papayas here. We've we got, got papayas, some mango, pineapple. pineapple. We've, We've got, got mango over here. And, you know, the mangoes are just coming into season right now. And one of the, the varieties that I really love to work with is this one that you find that's all yellow. It's a variety that is called manila in, in Mexico, but this is a kind of hybrid version of it that is um, called champagne mango or a uh, honey manila here Beautiful in the United flesh. States. And what everybody loves about it is the creaminess mm -hmm. of the flesh. Very silky. Yes, and then I've just cut the exterior of it off. Now, sometimes people are kind of uh, afraid of working with uh, mangoes because they just don't know what to do with that big pit that's in the middle. It's a cling pit, mm -hmm. so you can't ever expect to, the flesh of the fruit to come right off of the pit. And it's the same shape as the mango is itself. So I always stand it on its side so that I can cut down just about a half an inch from one side of the center and then flip it around and do the same thing on the other side. And I will just graze right across that pit, that flat pit that's in there. And then you can cut the fruit off of the pit around it like that, giving you the last little bit of it. And, of course, every cook wants to save the, the pit just to gnaw on while you're cooking because it's still got <laughs> some nice flesh still left on it. So I'm going to chop it up. And the whole idea about uh, gazpacho moreliano is that the smaller the pieces the better the end product. So I've got some really tiny so pieces here. you're doing a pretty here, fine chop on that. Doing though. a very fine chop on this one. And you'll notice that some of the mangoes that you find in the markets will be kind of a little bit stringy. The mm -hmm. one thing about this yellow mango, this one, the honey manila or the champagne mango, is that the flesh of it is so creamy and it's it beautiful. doesn't have any kind of stringiness to it. Still, you want to do a really nice fine dice. It's just like when you're making a chopped salsa, mm -hmm. like a chopped tomato salsa at the height of the summer when all the local tomatoes come in. The finer you chop the pieces, the more uh, melded together all the flavors are. A so now that's one. Too. That's one of our, our fruits that's going to go on. Now I have also a little bit of pineapple mm -hmm. that we're going to add into the mix here. And then I've got some papaya. Now this papaya... Um, I know that for many years, all we've really known in this country is the little solo papayas from uh, Hawaii. Right. And compared to ho papayas pretty much anywhere else in the world, they don't have a whole lot of flavor. But the Mexican ones now are starting to come into the markets a whole lot. And they're this size. This is what you'll find you got to choose them when they, they have some give to them because they got to be ripe. And then you just scoop out the seeds Please. and chop up the flesh after you peel it, of course. And so we've got some of that papaya that we're going to be adding right into the, the bowl is here. Is there a different taste in those than Hawaiian papayas? Were? There is taste in those, yes. Okay. There is taste <laughs> Thank in you those. very much. Okay. <laughs> but up, up. Walked right into that. You, know, you did, actually, you did. Okay, now uh, jicama for crunch. If you haven't worked with jicama before, you need to know simply that 
it looks a little bit like a potato on the exterior, mm -hmm. but the, it has a much tougher skin. So you cut all the way down about a sixteenth of an inch below the surface to get all the woodiness off the exterior, cut it into slices, and dice that into small pieces as well. So right now what you I look, that. it looks like you've got, taste. it does, doesn't yeah, it? It's sort of apple-y. A it's little kind of, apple-y, yeah, a beautiful big. crunch. Some people sort of liken it to the crunch of water chestnuts, but it's mm -hmm. sweeter than mm -hmm. that. And it's you know, one of the things that's so nice about it is you can add it to anything that you want that fresh crunch in, mm -hmm. and it'll just, it'll liven it up. Ch salsas, practically anything. it's easy anything. to work with for homemade salsas. And Absolutely. Kind of now, so what we have basically now is a fruit salad with a little crunchy jicama in there. And we're going to add to that um, the bright elements that are going to okay. kind of perk it up. I've got a little bit of orange juice that's going to go in here as well. And, and then I'm going to put some, some lime in it. Mm. Now, this is what I've got here is a Mexican lime squeezer, the, one of the most useful pieces of kitchen equipment out there. And the reason it's so useful is that it extracts all of the juice out of the lime, but at the same time, it crushes the skin of the lime, releasing all those really beautiful aromatic oils. So when you do it, well, first of all, you don't put it in this way. This is the way everybody <laughs> thinks you should put it in. But just imagine where that juice is going to go, like right up in I'm your face. I'm going to move right off. Okay, that, so you would have good, to. Yes. Okay, so you actually are turning that lime inside out like that. It crushes the the lime. And then it's turned it inside out, releasing okay. all those beautiful oils. Yeah, those and after you've done wonderful. a few of them, you can smell it, mm -hmm. can't you? Absolutely. After Absolutely. you've done a few of those, well, you've got a beautiful aroma in the kitchen, but you've also got a limeier flavor in whatever it is that's going to take that lime juice. So that's our, our basic mix there for gazpacho moreliano. But when they eat fruit from the street vendors in the Mexico, they always put two things besides lime on it. They always put chili and salt. So then they're taking it into a real savory direction, and that's what we're going to do to finish this gazpacho moreliano. So I have a martini glass here, and I'm going to take the, this base of fruit salad that's, uh, with the crunchy. That's good for openers. He, so. he, like there you go. Martini glass. Very yeah, suggestive. well, you have to, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess you could add, you could Absolutely. actually turn this into Probably a, could. a little welcoming cocktail. Could yes. you? I think you could do something yeah. pretty good with that. Yeah. Okay, so we've got the base of our gazpacho moreliano there, and we're going to then top it with savory elements. The first one that we're going to do is fresh cheese. Now, this is fresh cheese that I made. And in fact, mm -hmm. on the new season of, uh, of Mexico One Plate at a Time, I show how to make fresh cheese at home. Super simple. It's just warm milk set with a little bit of lime juice, and it makes the freshest, most beautiful, beautiful cheese. This is called queso fresco in Mexico, and we're going to put a little bit of that over the top of the gazpacho moreliano. Oh, that's good. Now, and what then else have we got here? The next thing is mm. a little bit of salt with some chili. This is ancho, ancho chili. chili. And just beautiful sprinkle that too. over mm. the top of it. That'll take it in a beautiful, savory direction as well. And then to finish it off, a little bit of ah, crab beautiful. meat. Now, the crab meat's sort of what I did for you, because I knew these tables <laughs> were going to be so beautiful and all that sort of stuff. When you buy it from the street vendors in Michoacan, they don't put the crab meat on mm. it, but it's really delicious. I think you'll like that, okay? And there you've got a very simple dish, but one that is absolutely refreshing to start off a meal. Kind of a savory and sweet starter with beautiful crab on the top of it. Got a few there chips you go. to lay on well, it. Let me and grab a spoon, got, Eric. Yes, right I over here, this, sir. I'm gonna I think this might you. work out really well. Well, here, if I, knew I can he was just steal this martini glass, this right I gotta away. do a little bit of this. I couldn't give him, I couldn't mm. keep him away from it. Mm. Okay, well, what do you oh, think? Oh, wow. Absolutely <clears throat> delicious. Okay? It's savory, it's sweet, you got the aromatics in there. Absolutely delicious. Let's have a big hand for Rick Bayless. Crab gazpacho, yum, yum, yum.